Hello and welcome to today's demonstration of the New York Continuing Professional Education Requirements for CPAs. I'm Janae Fletcher and I'll be hosting the presentation. This demonstration is to clarify any questions on what the requirements are specific to New York regulations. So who is required to take CPE? CPE is required for CPAs that are licensed within the state of New York. These are CPAs that practice primarily in accounting, tax, financial, or management advisory services. Your CPE is required during the second registration period after the first initial licensing year. There are several exemptions that the state does acknowledge. The first exemption is the newly licensed CPA. Then any CPAs who are not performing work specific to accounting, tax, or financial advisory practices within the state can request exemption from the board. Certain hardships, such as a health-related problem, armed force service, or a different extreme hardship can also be requested for exemption. This brings us to the overall CPE requirements for New York CPAs. The reporting period from January through December runs on a triennial cycle so within three years, you have so many CP requirements that must be reported. There is a New York specific ethics requirement to be completed in that reporting cycle, and the board recognizes CPE as education that will contribute to the development or maintenance of a licensee's professional competence. And within that parameter, New York recognizes CPE that falls within specific subject areas. So what are those recognized subject areas? These areas are considered technical, such as taxation, accounting, auditing, advisory services, a test, and specialized knowledge. New York is different in their CPE reporting in that there are two choices in the amount of hours and the requirements needed for the triennial cycle. The first is a 120 CPE requirement that requires 40 hours to be completed annually. The CPE can be completed in any of the recognized subject areas along with four hours of professional ethics accepted by the state board. You have the opportunity to choose from the variety of subject areas to complete the 120 hour requirement. The second option in reporting CPE is a 72 hour specific requirement with 24 hours to be done annually. This means you can complete less hours of overall CPE, however it must be completed in only one of the subject areas. So you can complete all your courses in tax if you choose. The four-hour ethics requirement exists in this reporting type as well, with the added rule that it too must fall into the same specific subject area. So now that you have completed the necessary CPE in either the 120 or 72-hour option, you must report to the board. The reporting period runs from January 1st to December 31st to be reported at the end of that three-year cycle. The board does recommend that you keep your CPE records and certificates or at least five years after the completion date. The information that needs to be included in these records are your name, the program title, sponsor's name, New York sponsor ID number, subject area, number of CPE credits, and the program date with location. This takes us to what qualifies as continuing education hours. An hour of CPE is awarded for at least 50 minutes of duration for a course, whether it be live in person, a live webcast, or self-study format. These courses are recognized if they are interactive or not interactive. The New York Board does accept half credit hours based on a 25 minute increment. CP hours can only be used for the year you are reporting in and not any subsequent years. So what qualifies as acceptable CPE activities? Live CPE courses that come from an approved provider are worth CPE credit. Self-study CPE courses in one of the approved subject areas that is also registered and sponsored with the New York Board can be used for reporting CPE. Preparing and teaching formal CPE or college courses can qualify. You can also have any published works in a peer-reviewed journal with an approved subject area qualify for CPE as well. So over these three years of completing different CPE courses, it is very important to have a means of tracking this information. For this reason, cpcompliance.com has built in the Compliance Manager feature into their system for tracking these records. Compliance Manager actively monitors deadlines and mandatory subject requirements based on what type of license or licenses you have. It is updated regularly for all states as well as other professional licenses. Any CP certificates you have from other providers can be uploaded into the system and will monitor what subject areas and formats are allowed. Each month, Compliance Manager will send you updates on your progress to completing your CPE requirement. We will now move over into the actual Compliance Manager for both type of CP reporting hours available in the state of New York. Once logged on to your account on cpecompliance.com, you will go to the Compliance Manager. The Compliance Dashboard gives you a snapshot of your current progress towards completing your CPE requirements. In the first example, I have chosen the 120 CPE hour requirement for my triennial reporting period. When signing up for Compliance Manager, you will be given the option of how to report your CPE. 
It is important to know that you cannot switch the reporting method in the middle of a cycle. You can view your progress from each year to work towards completing the total goal of 120 hours along with the New York ethics requirement. The first year in the reporting cycle shows that I did complete my 40-hour annual requirement with the classes that are listed below as well as the second year. I am now in the third year of my reporting period where you can see that there is a deficit of 16 hours. By clicking the Get Credit button, I can see what courses qualify from self-study and webcast options to fulfill this requirement. Going back to the Compliance Manager, you also have the option to upload external courses. At the bottom of the page, there is an Add Course button. Clicking this button will take you to the Course Detail page where you can fill out the course information of CPE you have taken elsewhere. After filling out the provider, date, and CPE hours, you can upload a PDF file of your Certificate of Completion. Some CPAs do have multiple licenses, which Compliance Manager can track and monitor as many professional licenses as you have. Next to the State Requirement area, you can click on Add License to input any other state licenses or if you're an enrolled agent or part of the AICPA. It is important to have appropriate initial licensing date information to be accurate. We will now switch to the 72 CPE hour specific requirement in New York that is very similar. Again, you will see the three-year reporting period that is starting from this year moving forward. I have chosen to report the 72 hours and pick tax as my recognized subject area. Each year has the progress marked based on what courses have been completed in the specific subject area. So from the 24 annual requirement, I have only completed 19 hours. That leaves me with a deficit of five hours to be done by the end of the year. The Get Credit button will take me to Approve Courses for Tax. The Summary section lets you know where you are and if you are on track for completing the designated requirements. Some last added features of Compliance Manager that I want to mention is that it is tablet friendly so you can view it on the go and even upload certificates by taking pictures with your tablet or camera phone. All this information can be exported into an Excel file or printer-friendly version of the Compliance Manager page. Emails are also sent on a monthly basis to update you on your compliance status. This does conclude the presentation on the New York CP requirements as well as how to track all this information with the Compliance Manager. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. My email and phone number are listed on this last page for your use. Thank you for attending this demonstration.